guess we shouldn't have taken our case so lightly, even though they're new to the scene. Yeah. Supposedly some was the one who spearheaded the campaign to scoop up all the ex-Tojo. Turns out he's teaching the next generation of thugs about protection money, loan sharking, mugging. He's like an unemployment agency for shitheads. They've got 50 full-time bodies so far, but if you include part-timers and other associates, they may be well over 2,000 strong. That's a lot. Even half that's a lot. The Yakuza left behind a gaping power vacuum in this town. Even if it wasn't our case, someone else would have swooped in. So much for peace and quiet in Kamurocho, huh? Sorry, sounds call. Hello? It's Shiosaki. Sorry for the wait. I found our file on Ahara's victim. Ah, oh, Mamiya-san, right? Yui Mamiya? Yes. She lives with her family in East Ikebukuro. I'm about to make a quick house call. Awesome. Then I'll be right over. Good. See you sooner than later, I hope. I caught all that. You go on ahead, Doc. This one's outside my area of expertise. Okay. I'll head back to the office when I'm done. Oh, perfect timing, Yagami-san. And here I was about to go without you. Are you ready to visit Mamiya-san? Well, the best we can hope for is that she'll hear us out. Remember, we're speaking to a victim here, Yagami-san. One whose assailant we defended in court. If we had tried to make an appointment, she probably would have declined outright. Hmm. Not sure showing up unannounced is much better. So let's just hope she's willing to talk. <sighs> yes. There's no way around it. It's a risk we had to take. Well, here goes nothing. Yes? I'm Shirasaki from the Genda Law Office, the attorney for Mr. Akihiro Ehara. You may remember me from the hearings. Why are you here? Don't you know it's rude to show up at someone's door uninvited? I understand, but we have a pressing matter that directly concerns you. If we could do this another way, we would. I apologize for any inconvenience. I'm sorry, but the trial's over and done with. You know I can legally turn you away. You're right, but I'm only asking a moment of your time. Please, would you mind? I don't have time for this. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Wait, 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 before you do that. Sorry to butt in. I'm Yagami, a detective helping Sari here out. And? Are you aware of the trending video that's leading people to believe Ahara committed murder? Thing is, the victim was confirmed to be alive in Yokohama until the morning of your own incident. And since Ahara was on the train with you, 
They're ruling him out as a murder suspect. So, what is it you're getting at? Just trying to ensure you're in the clear from any of that unfortunate business. If we could do this now, we'd never bother you again. All we need is ten minutes of your time. How absurd. We're only trying to help, but if later would work better for you, we could always come back another time. With our supervisor, of course. That visit would probably be more formal. There'd be paperwork, audio tapes, you know the drill. You'll want to clear your schedule. I really don't have time for any of that. No, I understand, and it's entirely our fault. We thought we'd do this casually, but we really should have been more by the book. But it is a murder case, so we do have to make sure our paperwork is in order here. Now, would you prefer to schedule a date to accommodate a more formal interview? Uh, you said ten minutes if we do it now, right? We'll make it as painless as possible. All right. Hold on. We really do appreciate it. Well, I'm impressed. I'm also not sure I should trust a word you say ever again. Really? <laughs> I did get us in the door, didn't I? I'm joking. I do appreciate the help. Now let's not screw this up. This is likely the only conversation we'll have with Mamiya-san. Hello! <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Again, we apologize for the intrusion. Let's just get this over with already. Okay, bye-bye. We'll make this quick. Suspicious. Uh-huh. Hey, suspicious. Uh-huh. 
suspicious. What the? Suspicious. What the? So, talk. I've already told the police and the court everything they could want to know about that morning. I'm sorry to put you through this again, but would you mind going over those details with us? What else is left to discuss? I understand how pressured you might feel. I've gone over this so many times. I wonder if pressing charges was even worth it. No. What you did was both brave and inspirational. Many victims are afraid to come forward for any number of reasons. Your voice might give them courage to find their own. Ironic. Hearing this from that predator's defense team. Well, perhaps. Would you mind walking us through that day from the beginning? It's nothing so mysterious. I was just on my way to work when some man grabbed my butt. That's all it was. Nothing else was out of the ordinary that day? Correct. Not to pry, but where is your husband today? Still at work? He usually doesn't get home until later. On that note, I have to feed my son, so let's get this wrapped up soon. We'll try our best to. Moving along. On that day, you and Ahara-san boarded the train bound for Ikebukuro, correct? Had you ever seen the man before then? No. H at least not that I can recall. How many times must I go over this? Your lawyer friend here already knows everything I have to say. What do you gain by getting me to repeat things? That's the thing. Yagami-san here is a specialist. He can take whatever you repeat, analyze it, and draw up an entirely new conclusion. Right? Of course. That's exactly why I'm here. In the security footage as you stepped onto the train, it looks like Ahara-san stepped right behind you. Were you aware of his presence at this point? I was. It felt like someone kept pushing up against me with no sense of personal boundaries. I remember second-guessing myself at the time, thinking it was normal for the train to be that packed. Then the train took off while you were stuck in that situation. Yes. And then I felt the back of his hand against me. It kept getting worse from there, to the point where he went under my skirt. And the pig had the nerve to write it off as an accidental brush on a crowded train. But that kind of touch wasn't accidental. He even grabbed at me. Truly awful. And I do sympathize. I've also had to turn in an abuser like that. Personally speaking, some men can't wait to debase themselves at the first opportunity. Why would you say that and look at me? I just stood there, frozen. I couldn't see who was touching me. I had no idea what to do. I wanted to scream. But what if he just played it off? So I decided I would bear it till the next station. Are you okay, Mommy? I'm fine, sweetie. We're just having a bit of grown-up talk. Are you hungry? Uh-huh. Then go read your book and wait over there for Mommy. We're almost done. You said the abuse lasted the entire six minutes between Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station. Did you see the Groper's face at any time during that span? No. I was too terrified to look. And, and I thought, even if I did, he'd just pull away and escape. But just as the train was pulling into Shinjuku, I reached back and grabbed the hand on me. 
That's when I saw his face. Of course, he shook me off as the doors opened, but I'd already gotten a clear look at him. He must have known I could turn him in at that point. So he ran, and I chased after. Right. That was captured by the station's security cameras. Great job tailing him in such a crowded space. On that note, did you ever happen to lose sight of Ahara-san while running? This cat was pretty easy to spot, and no one else was bolting off the platform like that, so I, I never lost sight of him. At that point, I could feel my voice returning, so I just screamed, that man grabbed me! I'm glad there were good Samaritans nearby. For sure. And there were a lot of smartphones out, so I figured there was no way for him to get away with it. I was so relieved. I see. I think I've got the gist of it. But now we've got a piece of evidence that contradicts what you've told us. What do you mean? Despite what we just went over, wouldn't you say this contradicts your account of the incident? I'm not sure what you mean. Did I say something odd? No, Yagami-san is currently the odd one here. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that wasn't what I had in mind at all. If you'll allow me to rephrase. On the same day, at 6.30 a.m. in Yokohama, a student teacher named Hiro Mikoshiba was sent off to work by his mother. But he was soon abducted near his home, only to be found dead much later in Ijinsho. Is that...? According to the video, the Harasan here is the murderer. What? He killed Mikoshiba in cold blood to get vengeance for his bullied son. His kid was about to graduate high school, but instead he took his own life. So Ahara took it upon himself to punish his son's tormentor. That's awful. But now we come back to the issue here. If this footage is authentic, then Ahara-san couldn't have been your assailant. The victim's estimated time of death and Ahara-san's time of arrival in Tokyo simply don't allow for it. It's just not possible for someone to make that commute. <sighs> but there's the flip side. If Ahara-san was in fact your assailant, it would mean this murder footage is a fabrication. I don't know what you expect me to say after all this. Right? Now you know how we're feeling. That's why we came to see if you had any leads for us. So that's what this is about. After hearing your story, I have no doubt you endured a lot that day. Which would obviously mean that murder video was faked. Then... who shared that video? And why? Wish I knew. Based on the quality, something this convincing would need quite a budget. Whether it's CG on top of real murder footage or just a rock solid AI creation, no way it was cheap. So, why go through all this effort to fake a murder? Who would benefit from it? But I have to say, I feel much closer to piecing this puzzle together with your help today. Thank you very much for your time. Yes. And rest assured, this will be the last time you see us. Our apologies for the unexpected visit. And for dredging up unpleasant memories. It's fine. So long as this is really the end of it all. I'd like to report Mamiya-san's account to the rest of the team. Can I count on you to be there? Sure. Let me give Kaito-san a heads up. 
All right, then I'll see you there. Yo, me. Hey, I just got back to Comrade Joe. Everything good? Any news? All good here, man. What's with you? You worried RK got to me or something? I mean, they did run their mouths about stabbing us in the back. But if you're good, I'm good. Anyway, I'm heading to Genda so Sari-san and I can go over what we learned from Mamiya. You're the boss. As for me, I'm calling it a day. <laughs> you do that. Are we ready, Yagami-san? Let's start with our visit to Mamiya-san, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, let's start there. So, the victim's story is completely in line with her court testimony, huh? That's correct. There wasn't anything new to pick up. Unfortunately. In which case, should we look into the murder video instead? Like, figure out how they made it? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Whether that tape's fake or real, someone had to put it online, right? Do we have any theories on who that might be? Well, the footage showed enough of the surroundings to make the crime scene clear. As somebody who's been there, I can confirm that the blood splotches match what you see in the footage. Which means... The murderer's accomplices have to be the ones who posted it for him. Yeah. I can't see it any other way. I also agree with Yagami-san. But in that case, what would their motive be? Maybe they wanted to make a mockery of the police, or even the whole system. Huh? We know Ihara got himself convicted for groping so he'd have an alibi for Mikoshiba's killing. But then, his conspirators turned it around by uploading the murder video online. Almost as if to say, look how he got away with it. I see. Yeah, that does make it sound like he's taunting them. That's well and good, but I'd like to shift gears. Let's talk about the actual fabrication of the video. How does one go about that? Well, for example, the true culprit would be taped murdering Mikashiba. Then Ihara's face would be copied and blended onto the killers. That's how they'd approach it in a Hollywood movie. But then, wouldn't you be able to see traces of it being faked? Tsukumo-san reported that he's found nothing of the sort in his analysis. We've been down this road before. If we take the stance that the footage is fabricated, we have absolutely nothing to work with. Then let's tackle this from the stance that the video's actually real. If that's the case, there has to be a flaw in the groping issue. I think we've collected enough evidence to find it, too. Before meeting with Yui Mamiya, didn't you mention the possibility of Ahara using a stand-in? Perhaps the real Ahara murdered Mikoshiba in Ijincho, then swapped places with the imposter so he could be detained. But we couldn't find an opportunity for the swap to happen, remember? From the moment he set foot on the Ikebukuro platform, Ahara was constantly on camera. But wait, that's not entirely accurate, is it? Huh? Remember how we mocked up a diagram of the Shinjuku station platform? Yeah. Oh, wait, that's it. You could be onto something. There's a point where Ahara wasn't on camera at all. What is this point you speak of? Let's all go over the diagram so that everything will be clear. Here's what I want you to see. Hey. What the? It's very brief, but there's a moment where Ihara and Mamiya-san can't be seen by the security cameras. The dotted lines on the arrow represent the camera's blind spot. It does appear so. So you're saying this is where the Groper, the fake Ihara, traded places with the real one? 
Can't say it's impossible, right? Right. Except if that actually happened, Mamiya-san would have been right behind them at the time. Could the two really swap places without her noticing? In a crowd like that, I think it's feasible. If that really was Ehara's plan, then I'd say he was being careless. Careless? How? Well, on the day of the incident, the station was packed for morning rush hour. That means there was no solid guarantee the assailant could make the switch. He could have been nailed by any random passerby before reaching the blind spot. Good point. Not only that, if Mamiya-san had called for help while the train was still moving, then the first Ahara would have been caught before even reaching the platform. Oh, I mean, yeah, called it. Think about it, Yagami-san. Why would Ahara's accomplices meticulously plan out every last detail of this alibi, only to leave such a crucial component to chance, as Hoshino-kun pointed out? Oh, just doing my job. True. Good work, Hoshino-kun. In fact, I think that may back up my own take on it. Yeah? What if everything, including the appearance of leaving the plan to chance, was part of the plan? Can you expound on that? I'm saying I agree that such an airtight alibi wouldn't have allowed for contingencies. And that takes the question to another level. Just how far did they line up the pieces in advance to make the swap work? Are you saying there's more to it than we discussed? What did we miss? I know this won't go over well, but what if Mamiya was colluding with Ahara all along? Huh? Bear with me. Let's say Mamiya was in on this and knew about the imposter in advance. If that's the case, the swap could happen right in front of her and no one but the three of them would know. You're saying the victim of a groping conspired with her assailant beforehand? That's ridiculous! Let me just say, I'm only trying to work out how a swap like that would be guaranteed to work. Now, if Ahara and his stand-in both know that Mamiya will pretend not to have seen them, they can trade places in the blind spot with impunity. Conversely, if Mamiya wasn't in on the plan, the idea of a swap would never work. We can say with certainty that she would have seen the swap, so... She could have even called attention to the real Ahara the moment he stepped in. That way, the people around her would be focused on chasing the correct assailant. The rest is as we know it. They caught Ihara and detained him until the police showed up. Hold that thought. If your theory is accurate, what about Ihara's trace evidence? Remember that fibers of the victim's underwear were detected on his hand. Well, that can also be explained by Mamiya being in on the plan. For example, while the stand-in was showing himself at the security cameras, Mamiya could have easily provided Ahara access to a pair of underwear at the same time. Maybe the stand-in loitered around for so long because he was letting everyone else get themselves in place. It's not impossible. We can work out the other details later. But the point is, Ahara's murder alibi is shot if Mamiya was involved. In summary, it's possible that Hara disgraced himself to secure an unshakable alibi for Mikushiba's murder. I'll concede that it's an avenue worth pursuing. And when it comes to the prosecution, they can't just admit they got the first case so wrong. Plus, they can't question Hara about Mikushiba's murder. In fact, their only option is to claim the tape was faked. So he managed to make a farce out of the system after all. Well... His court case for his son's bullying did get more or less thrown out, didn't it? The school, the investigative committee, and the court all agreed. There wasn't enough evidence to convict anyone. No surprise for me that the guy held a grudge against the system for so long. Hold on. Before we all decide on this... What's up? The obvious question to me is why would Mamiya be party to such a crime? She appears more than financially stable and she's even raising a child. So why would she do something so enormously risky as helping establish a murder alibi? Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. 
But maybe she was promised something that far exceeds the risk. Or maybe Ahara has some kind of dirt on her, even? Enough to make her help with a murder? What sort of secret would be big enough to force someone into that corner? What info do we have on Mamiya anyway? Maybe we can spot a connection to Ahara through her profile. I'll pull her information. Just a second. Oh. I just thought of something else those two would have guaranteed by working together. What's that? If Ahara wanted to use this crime as a murder alibi, he needed it to blow up into the public eye. But if he had chosen a victim who stayed silent, then nothing would have come of it. A solid plan would need to eliminate that variable, which means Mamiya being an accomplice was crucial to Ahara's success. That's true. Looks like Ahara pulled one over on the prosecution then. Had his accomplices right where he wanted them, even his victim. Once we learn how he's connected to Mamiya, we can root out the rest of his team. Let's see. According to her file, her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. 30 years old, so that's consistent. Originally from Ota, Tokyo. Attended a private high school called Kurakawa Academy. Later graduated from Toto University. Huh. Met her husband on the job, apparently. Her husband, Taichi Mamiya, is an industrial designer at Techno Zeta Inc. Six years ago, she gave birth to their only son, Sotaku, who's now in first grade. Hold on. You said she went to Kurakawa Academy? I heard that name in Ijincho. If I recall correctly... When I went to scope out the murder scene, there were these three guys watching the detectives and me. They told us they were just checking things out, but they mentioned they're Kurakawa grads too. Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Kakei-san, age 30. Akaike-san, age 30. Mommy is 30 as well. What's that got to do with anything? Aren't we trying to find a connection between Mamiya and Ahara? I found the Kurakawa Academy website. Looks like they're pretty prestigious. It's in Tokyo, specifically in Ota. Pretty close to where Mamiya lived. No. Oh. What? The girls there get such cute uniforms. You little... You want to start all over from the bar exam? Wait, I've seen that uniform before too, actually. Where? On an old picture of a teacher at Serio High, Sawa-sensei. Nahara's son had confided in her. Is she actually a Kurakawa grad too? I don't know Sawa Sensei's exact age, but she could well be 30. Maybe all of them were even classmates. Could this mean they're actually linked? The victim and her up to now unrelated assailant? It's a tenuous link at best. Could fall apart any time. But no true detective alive would pass it up. A previously unseen link is established between the groper and the victim. Charting out their relationship is akin to tracing a spider's web. But with each false thread ruled out, only the improbable truth remains. Ehara orchestrated the groping as a diversion. And by tarnishing his name, he secures both an alibi and his ultimate revenge. Hiro Mikashiba's murder was sparked by the bullying of Toshiro Ehara, who committed suicide four years ago. The graphic video that hit the net showed the world how Toshiro's father, Akihiro Ehara, had brutally avenged his son. We also know 
the father had accomplices. On October 7th at 6.30 a.m., they forced Mikoshiba into a vehicle, took him to an abandoned building, and gravely injured him. Then, around 7.30 a.m., the time frame when Ahara killed Mikoshiba, the other conspirators were probably nearby, even though they weren't on camera. At the same time, 30 kilometers away at Ikebukuro Station, a man who looks like Ehara is caught on camera. We'll call that guy the stand-in. The stand-in made sure he was in front of the cameras for more than an hour before boarding the 9.06 a.m. train, the same one Yui Mamiya was on. After committing sexual battery on that train, he meets the real Ehara in the camera's blind spot, and they change places. That's how he established a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. And to achieve this, the victim, Yui Mamiya, had to have been in on it from the start. Hmm. Sure are a lot of people getting their hands dirty for Ahara. Mamiya, Ahara standing on the train, the guys who kidnapped Mikoshiba. How did some troubled cop manage to recruit so many allies? Well, one person that comes to mind who might be the key to all this is Yoko Sawa. She's a teacher at Serio High. She was the only adult Toshiro-kun ever told about the bullying, and she supervised Mikoshiba as a teacher before he disappeared. On top of that, she's a Kurokawa Academy graduate, same as Mamiya. Those trespassers at the murder scene were also from Kurokawa. Since they're all about the same age, it's possible they were all classmates. So you're saying these classmates are also Ohara's murder accomplices? If we consider Yokosawa the central link, that's very possible. We do know that as a teacher, she felt deep remorse for Toshiro-kun's suicide. Maybe she recruited her old classmates to help Ohara take his revenge. Yeah, best not to rule that out. Though I'm hoping that's not the case. Why is that? It's just, she's a really good teacher. She's passionate, responsible. She's always putting the students first. I know she regrets the past, and a student died on her watch. And now another of her students, Mikoshiba, is found murdered. So if it turns out she's involved in that, I doubt I'll be able to trust my own judge of character ever again. Yagami. I'm going back to Ejinsho tomorrow. The plan is to bring up Mamiya's name to Sawa-sensei and see how she reacts. Until then, let's not jump to conclusions about her involvement. Alright. Uh, can I chime in real quick? I was looking into Kurokawa Academy and I stumbled across something that may be relevant. What's that? Well, it happened 13 years ago, but there was an attempted suicide. A third year jumped off the school's roof after being thoroughly humiliated. Actually, Sawa-sensei mentioned that. She said it was a boy in her class. Right, that's gotta be the same case then. The student's name was Mitsuru Kuzumoto. He's 30 now, but still in a coma. Huh, and all that info's on the net? It wouldn't be normally, but his mother happens to be Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. Ever heard the name Reiko Kusumoto? Not once. I have. It was on the news. They were talking about her and her son. Well, do you remember the uproar in the health ministry when Vice Minister Ichinose got arrested? Apparently, his successor couldn't contain the resulting chaos, which is when Kusumoto-san got tapped to lead. They couldn't afford another criminal scandal, so her promotion was out of the blue. She was a safe choice, a veteran with tenure and experience. Not to mention, her son's tragedy made people see her as a more sympathetic figure. Very popular. She's kind of a new generation heroine, so to speak. Huh. Is any of that relevant to the case at hand, though? Who knows? But Reiko Kusumoto and Ahara both have children who were bullying victims. I don't think that's a connection we can afford to overlook, if you ask me. Okay, so Kusumoto's son. What exactly happened to him? Let's see. 
he was bullied by a fellow third year at his school, Shinya Kawai. The records say he harassed Mitsuru-kun every day, in and out of school. Well, one time he even stuffed dirty rags in his mouth. That's so cruel. Yeah, and the teacher was a real piece of work. Apparently he knew, but he just smirked and said, don't overdo it. Oh, I remember now. The media pounced on that one hard. If they were classmates, then both Sawa-sensei and Mamiya would know about this. And maybe because they couldn't save Mitsuru-kun, their guilt left them open to Ahara's persuasion. But to prove that, we'll have to hear from them directly. I'll talk to Sawa-sensei first thing tomorrow. That'd be helpful. In the meantime, I'll be working on Ahara's appeal. It's clear they missed something important in the trial, since Ahara is apparently innocent of sexual battery. Being that he was out committing murder at the time. What started as a simple harassment case sure has blown up big. I admit, I used to see Ahara as nothing more than a shameless cop who got what he deserved. But I guess that's what he wanted us to believe, along with the prosecution and the public at large. What we're dealing with is a man who disgraced himself and the justice system all in the name of vengeance. At this point, I doubt much can scare him. You have to be a certain kind of desperate to sink that low. Thanks again, Yagami-san. Try to relax for once. You've earned it. Wait a minute, what? Yo, you took your sweet time. But I got the gist of it. You're going to Ijincho, right? To meet with Sawa-sensei? Kaito-san, you do realize that only I can meet her. You can't get into the school. I know, but if you end up taking it off campus, can you at least call me this time? Don't you understand the situation? Sawa-sensei might be tied to murder. You sure you understand it? Come on, she would never do that. That a fact? 
So happens I'm a great judge of character. Especially when it comes to women. Ah, oh, sometimes I forget who I'm talking to. First stop, it's gotta be Chinatown. Can't face Tsukumo on an empty stomach. Never a dull day for you, huh, Kaito-san? It's a selection, man. I've already worked out the math. I figure if I hit four or five places a day... What? What's up? Check that out. It's Akutsu. Kamurocha thugs are looking pretty out of place here. Yo! Akutsu! What are you fools doing in town? Hey, don't ignore me. It's Kaito. Fancy seeing you here. I'm kind of busy here, man. Catch you later. What an asshole. Yuchincho's a long way from home. And he's traveling with a small army. Would he have come all this way because of us? Nah, we just caught him totally off guard. He's not out here for us. Gotta be something else. But something's not right if they're just cruising around. Hmm. It's gotta be an RK operation. He brought too many guys for it to be something more personal. Yeah. <laughs> Kamurocho streets can be tough. Maybe they gave up. Hmm. Well... Whatever they came out here to do, we ought to keep our noses the hell out of their business. But you better hustle. You're gonna be late for class. I'll catch you after school. Oh, uh, what is it, Yagami-san? Sensei, do you have a minute? I saw the video of Miko Shiba-kun. So you did. That video, right? I thought Ehara-san was convicted for a sex offense. How could he be in that video killing Miko Shiba-kun? And that video looked so real. Most likely it is. As you unfortunately had to witness, Harasan committed murder with his own two hands. Which means as far as the groping that day goes, there's some deception at work. A uh, deception? Are you familiar with Harasan's victim in the case? Her name is Yui Mamiya. I don't think I recognized her, no. Thirteen years ago, she attended Kurokawa Academy. Her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. Yui Suzuki? Just a minute. Are you saying she was the one Ehara-san groped? So you do know her then? Were you two classmates? We were, in our third year of high school. I had a hunch. You didn't know she was the victim of that whole incident? I mean, it's just so hard to believe. Does this all seem like a wild coincidence to you then? Your old student's father gropes one of your high school classmates at a station with three million daily travelers. 
What are you implying? I'm saying your old friend Yui might be cooperating with the Harasan. As in, she only played the part of a victim. She might have even known it was all to hide a murder. What? But why? Why would she do that for him? From where I'm sitting, Sensei, you're connected to Ahara and Yui Mamiya. I just need your help figuring out what that connection is. Yagami-san, please. Are you implying I was some kind of liaison between them? Well, Sensei, what was your relationship with Yui Mamiya? Were you close? Or would you say classmates covers it? The two of us were never really that close. To be honest, I didn't really like the group of kids she hung out with. I guess you could say we didn't have the same interests. When was the last time you saw her? Did you have a high school reunion by any chance? They held a reunion around the time I graduated from college. But I didn't feel like going. That same class bullied a kid into jumping off the roof. So if that's the case, you haven't seen any of your classmates since you all graduated from Kurokawa? That's right. Okay then. The thing is, Ahara-san and Mamiya are connected. It is kinda loose, but it's there. They have one thing in common. What? In both of their pasts, someone they knew was bullied to the point of attempting or committing suicide. Ahara-san lost his son, Toshiro-kun, and as for Yui Mamiya, it's her classmate, Mitsuru Kusumoto. That could be a factor, especially for Mamiya. It's possible that Ahara-san would be a sympathetic figure to her. Maybe enough to help construct an alibi for his revenge. It's possible she only played the part of a groping victim. What do you think? Does it have any merit, or is my theory full of holes? Even if you're on the right track... Um... Sawa-sensei? We're just waiting on you to start the staff meeting. Oh, sorry, I'll be right there. What happened 13 years ago at Kurokawa? That might be the last piece of the puzzle. What about Yui Mamiya? How'd she react when Mitsuru Kusumoto tried to kill himself by jumping off that roof? I'm sorry, I'm already late for my meeting. I'm trying to ask you about a murder here. To Ahara, every unanswered question is a victory for that man. He's only a step away from walking for it. And I know Mamiya had other conspirators. It took more than one person to murder Mikoshiba. They're still at large, even as we speak. I'll be honest. I came here today with a suspicion that you might be more involved in this murder than you're letting on. A suspicion? Nothing you've said has made me feel any better about it. And what should I do about that, huh? I just want you to tell me... How are Ahara-san and Mamiya connected beyond what I've already figured out? I think you have the key to that answer, even if you don't know that you're the one holding it. It's like a lock, and until I figure out how to get through it, I'm gonna keep picking at it. I told you. I'm late for a meeting. I'll be here when you get back. Have a good meeting. <sighs> Suit yourself. Hey, sorry, son. It's Yagami. Hey, did you manage to talk to Sawa Sensei? Yeah, turns out she really was in Mamiya's class, and they were both aware of the suicide incident with their classmate. Good to know. While we're on the topic, Hoshinokun got his hands on some new info. Let's hear it. The bully at Kurokawa High was named Shinya Kawai. He transferred out right after Mitsurukun jumped, as if he were running away. Once he came of age, it looks like he worked here in Kamurocho. Wow. 
You really can find a lot online. Yes, and to top it off, Kawhi earned a reputation for talking about how he drove a classmate to suicide. Like he's proud of it. Maybe he thought he'd get a laugh in Kamurocho. Probably would. Kawhi was more or less a Yakuza, though he never swore into it. I just sent you his picture. It was taken five years ago. <laughs> what? This guy? You recognize him? Not too long ago, some RK punks came asking his whereabouts. Said he was a girls' bar manager who went missing. Yeah, it looks like he did work at a girls' bar. But we don't know which one. Okay, so the guy's definitely suspicious. What business would RK have with him? Do you know if they ever found him? No. But their leader, Soma, said something about Kawhi having already been killed. Like he just vanished from Kamurocho a few years ago, and that was it. Wait, he was killed? Uh-huh. Kinda gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawhi and Mikoshiba, two known school bullies. And they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawhi. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawhi a bit more on our end. With RK asking around, word on the street will be loud enough to hear. How was it, Saori-san? What did Yagami-san have to say? He said he recently ran into some RK members looking for Shinya Kawai. Did he? He also said RK later told him Kawai had been killed. Hmm. This is getting scarier with every new lead. Now that you mention it, I have seen people getting stopped and asked about someone all over town. But if those were RK on the hunt for Kawai, could it have something to do with our case as well? I'm honestly not sure how RK could be involved in all this. I'm going out for a bit, Hoshino-kun. Do me a favor and keep digging up what you can on Kawaii. Wait, what? Sometimes you have to get out in the field. It can't just be Yagami-san all the time. You don't mean you're going straight to RK for some answers? What else would I be doing? I need to know why they were looking for Kawaii. Then I'm coming with. I can't just let you do that alone. Don't worry, it's still light out, and I plan on staying in the open. Besides, if I'm alone, they'll be more eager to talk. That may be, but still, I'll just call you about every ten minutes then. For your safety. I find that rather unnecessary. You sure? If you're going out alone... Keep your wits about you, and get back safe. Oh, is that Sari-chan I see? To what do I owe this pleasure? Nice to see you too. Oh, hi. Say, aren't you one of Tok's lawyer friends? Does that mean he's on his way too? It's just me today. <sighs> Fine by me. That means you and I get some girl talk time. Oh, that stings, Mari. And here I thought I had a place in your heart. <laughs> Well, no one knows a lady's heart like a bartender. I guess you can stay. Let's see. All these bottles got you feeling lost? Care for a few pours from Tox? It'll be our secret. Besides, a man with his tab can't complain. 
you're too kind. So I'm actually here to ask you, how can I set up a meeting with RK? Darn. So this wasn't a pleasure call? Well, I'm glad you're at least enjoying the drink. True. And looking fancy doing it. Oh please, you two are going to embarrass me. My apologies. I suppose being surrounded by such beauties has a timeless appeal. Even at my age. I'll second that. Masuda here is looking at least a year younger. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> of course. If you got any younger, you'd be much too handsome. What's a girl to say? And I'll second that. <laughs> Anyhow, if you're after an RK rendezvous, the good news is those guys are everywhere. But it's not like a civilian can just stroll up and ask, Hey, are you RK? And expect to get an answer. You got that right. And Sauri chan needs to ask them something that's kind of sensitive. Oh, that's certainly going to make things challenging. Just a bit, yeah. So I say, why not let the boys do the chasing? Wouldn't be hard for an enchantress like you. But honey, we need to do something about your... Look, some nice clothes and a little makeup and you'd be unstoppable. Finally, my turn to second something. I suppose I would need to look approachable. Talk told me once that if you ever felt like it's sorry, chan you could put every hostess in Kamrojo to shame. I've got to admit, I'm curious. Well, a good hawk hides her talents. You're saying I should dress like a hostess for this? <laughs> well, I'm sure there are other ways. But if you want a foolproof plan to snag an RK, you've got one. Oh, if you want, I can get you some looks. And you can choose what you like. I get the message, and I suppose I'll take you up on that. Okay, then leave the rest to me.
Would you look at that? Doc was right on the money. I couldn't have imagined. You sure about that, Marisan? I hardly feel comfortable wearing this in front of you. What are you saying? You're so pretty. I wouldn't say so. Really? You're dynamite. Though, there is one thing that's missing. What's that? Pride. That's the final touch you need. Pride in your own beauty. Well, I I'm not sure I have that. Then how about your pride as a lawyer? You have that, don't you? As a lawyer? Yes, there it is. Go ahead and take a look. Now that's the face of the girl who gets the man she wants. It's been a while since I've felt this way. I have you to thank for that. <laughs> These bad boys won't know what hit them. Now, let's go dangle the bait. You mean us, right? You bet. Two nightlife girls like us alone on the street literally brings the RK boys running. Especially along Senrio Avenue. Why don't we take a walk? Uh, are you sure? I, I don't want to drag you into this. <laughs> are you kidding? And miss the chance to see this makeover in action? But really, I want you to succeed. I promise I won't be a bother. Excuse me, ladies. You, uh, get lost on the way to the beauty pageant? We're already out for a drink. Maybe heading to work somewhere in town? Oh, we're just two girls bar hopping by our lonesome. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, in that case, why don't you roll with us? I know a great place. You could drink all you want. Wow, you guys loaded or something? We can throw them back, you know. You sure? Hell yeah! There's a place my buddy runs. I'd be thrilled to see some ladies like you. Let's be real here. You're RK, aren't you? What makes you say that? Yeah. What kind of chick straight up asks if you're in a gang? Come on, it was just an innocent question. Besides, everyone already knows. Anyone worth a damn in this city's gotta be RK. And when you spot one, you just... How should I say it? There's a certain vibe to you guys, you know? True. Guess we do got that RK swag. I mean, yeah. We're just out here playing the game, you know? <laughs> and we ain't bad at it either. You gotta have a brain to work this town. So, if your ladies gotta choose, choose us. We know how to get ours. You boys certainly talk a good game. RK knows what's up, huh? <laughs> right? You must be pretty high up the RK ladder then, huh? Not just the local chumps? Not supposed to be blurting it out, but yeah. We're RK. And pretty high up, too. 
Shoot. RK wouldn't be what it is now without us. Never thought it'd get this big either. RK has Kamrocho pretty much wrapped around its finger now, huh? Just about. The time of the Yakuza laying down the law is over. All that respect and chivalry shit. Dead, like all the old legends. Now the underground world is a jungle. And winning the fight's all that matters. Wow, must be hard. But I think that's hot. That reminds me. Weren't you RK guys looking for someone recently? A man who disappeared a few years ago? Oh yeah, him. We were looking for this dude who ran a girl's bar. See? I knew you guys would know what that's about. <laughs> oh well, five years ago he suddenly disappeared. That's not even news in Kamurocho. That's so crazy though. What happened to him? You ever end up finding the guy? Nah, didn't work out. No surprise, he was just a punk anyway. His name was Kawhi. The way I heard it, some of his old friends rolled up on him one night. My guess is, it was trouble from another town catching up to him. Anyway, they argue for a bit, and it ends with the guy getting shoved into a van. And that's the last time anyone saw the dude. Whoa. What do you think happened? I'm thinking they bumped him off. If he was still breathing, he'd be back by now. I heard he never even picked up his final paycheck. I guess he's fish food now. Or they buried him on some remote-ass mountain. You have any idea who would have done that to him? Don't know. They say it was ten or so people. Young, both men and women. Doesn't sound like a gang thing. But who knows, right? It was five years ago. But if you heard all that, there must have been witnesses, right? So you're saying someone actually saw him get shoved in a van? Yep. Some chick working at his bar saw it all go down. At least that's what we heard from a guy who heard it from that chick. Where is this bar anyway? You mean some random dive bar half a decade ago? Who the hell knows? A hundred places have sprung up and gone under since. But then, why would anyone be looking for Shinya Kawai now? Did someone ask RK to find him? Think that's right? Hell if I know. It's a question for the top of the food chain. But hold on a sec. Can I ask you something? Huh? Just a minute ago, you mentioned a Shinya Kawai. How'd you know his full name when we never told you? Oh shit! You're only talking to us because you wanted dirt on Kawhi. So who the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? Who sent you? No one! I I'm just an arcade pen girl! Don't jump to conclusions. So, could you stop? Really? Damn, my bad. Guess you don't really look suspicious. You fucking moron! Don't you realize he's playing you? Uh, he's right. No charming your way out of this one. Start talking or else. I'm Saori Shurosaki, attorney at law. Unhand me this instant. Oh, you're gonna sue? You think I give a crap about what your job is? I'm saying things will go very badly for you if you keep this up. Big talk for a chick dressed to the nines to get info. Huh? Sorry, Chan? Yeah. You even try to fuck with us, lady! Sorry, Chan! Huh? What the? Ah! Beat it, punk. Higashi san! Asshole! I swear, these jerks are popping up like roaches. Uh, um... No thanks needed. Just be careful on your own. Especially when you're beautiful. Thank you so much, Higashi-san. I just said you don't... Wait. 
How do you know my name? It's me, Shirosaki, from Genda Law Office. It's been a while. Holy shit! No way! <laughs> I didn't realize. Shirosaki Sensei. I didn't recognize you. You look incredible. You're the one who is incredible. This is all my fault. I was the one who put Marisan in danger. You really saved us. <gasps> Young, strong, handsome. That's three out of three for me. Those guys were RK. Town's practically overrun with them these days. If you'd like, I can escort you somewhere safe. I got nothing but time on my hands. Oh, you don't say. Perfect. Who says we can't still salvage some fun out of tonight? Oh, uh, before we do that, let me call Yagami-san. Yagami's still a jackass, I see. When Shirosaki-sensei calls, you pick up in two rings. It is strange that he's not picking up. I'll try again. Wait, he was killed? Uh-huh. Kinda gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawaii and Mikoshiba, two known school bullies. And they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawaii. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawaii a bit more on our end. With RK asking around, word on the street will be loud enough to hear. Alright, thanks. Masawa. Um. Yeah. Thank you very much. よろしく
Hey. What was that? Does that mean? Yeah. I see. Excuse me. What? Are you serious? Uh... 
हाँ I see. That being said... Hmm... Gotcha. Yes. Yagami-san. Yeah. Thank you very much. So.
Yagami-san, would you say that you tail people often? I mean, it's a big part of the job. Do you have any tips for avoiding the target's suspicion? I tend to get made fairly quickly when tailing. What's an average high schooler tailing people for anyway? I just can't help myself when I pick up a lead. Kind of dangerous when you don't know your target, don't you think? But in the end, isn't it worth it if I can prevent an incident? No, not if it's something that puts your own life at risk. I somehow hadn't considered that. Anyway, I had no idea you had such a famous grandfather. Are you surprised? No. If anything, it's obvious that you're his granddaughter. Well, now I'm feeling the pressure. As a descendant of Kitan Amasawa, you should become the kind of detective that make him proud. For that to be possible, I need to take on as many cases as possible to hone my instincts. But what if you blundered into a case and ended up making a fool of yourself? Would that make Grandpa proud? Uh... The more curious I get. Once I've caught a whiff of a mystery, the Amasawa blood in me starts pumping. It's quite a burden you wound up inheriting. <gasps> it's a pleasure. Domo. Yagami. すみませんでした。
Okay. I'm a sour. No way. What? Sour. Yes. Seriously? Well... What was that? Sour. Yes.
Unbelievable. Thank you very much. Excuse me.
Excuse me. Oh. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Are you serious? Suspicious. Hmm? If I were to guess... Yeah. Yeah. 
Excuse me. Gotcha. Let's go. Nice. Look at that. 
My turn then. My turn then. Maybe next time. I have some practices in order. Damn. Sour. I see. Speaking of burdens, have you been studying for your exams? That is something I try not to think about too much. Obsessing over rote memorization would affect my reasoning skills. Well, I reason that you shouldn't let your club activities get in the way of your studies. 
I admit that's also something I try not to think about. That doesn't sound like the Amasawa I know. Gotta face the facts sometime. No, stop it! Oh, brother. That way? Really, guys? guys. Come <laughs> on. 
Here we go. All right.
Oh. Well. That being said. Excuse me. Yes. I see. Mm-hmm. 
Sawa. If I were to guess... Yeah. Yes. Suspicious. Hmm. Suspicious. Hmm? Oh, 
was that? Um... If I were to guess... I see. Um... In other words... No way. I have this right. In other words...
being said... Sawa. If I were to guess... I see. Which means...
If I were to guess... Yeah. I'm a sour. Hehehe <laughs> 